on March 18, 2018, at almost 10 p.m. at night, an autonomous vehicle operated by Uber struck and killed a female pedestrian walking across the street. A female operator was in the driver's seat monitoring the automated vehicle. This was the first pedestrian death involving a self-driving car. The pedestrian was crossing at a place where there was no crosswalk and she was pushing a bicycle with her. What can we learn from this tragic accident? This is the preliminary report of the NTSB, which investigated this accident. The automated driving system did detect the pedestrian with enough time to avoid an impact, but it failed to correctly classify her as a pedestrian and could not predict her path. The job of the human operator was to look at the road and monitor the automated driving system and take over in exactly situations like this. The operator was not doing that. She was looking down away from the road at her cell phone. She happened to look up just a second before the crash, but by then it was too late to avoid the pedestrian. There were so many things that went wrong. The pedestrian was crossing where there was no crosswalk. She was also impaired due to drug use. When Uber installed their own self-driving system into this car, they disabled the collision warning and automatic emergency braking systems that were already built into it. This meant that the car did not have emergency braking capabilities, which by now are quite common in most consumer human-driven cars. The NTSB also calls out the lack of an ingrained safety culture at Uber. This manifested in things like not monitoring the behavior of vehicle operators to see if they were doing a good job and also not incorporating risk assessment strategies into their design process which resulted in them disabling the car's built-in collision avoidance mechanisms. But the factor I really want to focus on is the human element as it involves the operator behind the wheel. If the operator had been looking at the road, she would likely have had enough time to avoid the crash. But she was lulled by the self-driving car, which almost always did its job perfectly. This effect is called automation complacency. There is another area of transport which has dealt with the problem of automation complacency and automation dependency for a very long time, and that is aviation. The reason this segment is in this course is because as we look at this accident history, what we find is that in 68% of these accidents, automation dependency plays a significant part. Automation dependent pilots allowed their airplanes to get much closer to the edge of the envelope than they should have. And you could say that to go up a level of automation will reduce workload and that would be true in many scenarios. You can also say, however, that going down a level in automation will reduce workload in certain scenarios. But you see, we have become what I call children of the magenta. <laughs> You know, we think we have to have those magenta lines on the map and that magenta V-bar that's steering us toward that line, or for some reason the plane won't fly. But when you think about how we have, we have brought people up in highly automated airplanes, it's kind of understandable, isn't it? Here's an article by William Langwisher in which he examines the crash of Air France Flight 447. To give a very brief summary, the cause of the crash was the pilot's not knowing what to do when the autopilot disconnected due to instrument problems. In this article, the author talks about the effects of automation on pilots and how it gradually erodes their skills over time because they depend so heavily on the automation. 
the automation is now actually good enough that it lets less competent pilots successfully fly planes. And ironically, the better the automation gets, the more human performance erodes, which leads to pressure to improve the automation further. This is referred to as the uncanny valley of automation, the unsafe zone where the automation is good enough for the human monitors to become complacent and dependent, but not yet good enough to prevent all accidents. When you build an automated system where the human is reduced to a purely monitoring role, but also required to intervene in exceptional circumstances, they are unable to do so because the constant monitoring dulls them. In this diagram, we see the difference between the red curves and the green curves as paths that are taken by an automated car after an automation failure, where the green curves are of partially automated cars and the red curves are of much more automated cars. You can see how in the highly automated scenario with the red curves, the human operator is suddenly surprised and unable to react in time. How do you bridge this uncanny, unsafe valley of automation? There is no silver bullet, but the consensus seems to be to design systems that keep the human operator more involved. I agree with Languisher when he says that over time the automation will get so good that you don't need humans at all and you'll still have accidents but then you will only have the machines to blame.